So hello everyone, I am Vivian and our guest today is Raquel Rayner. Hi Raquel, how are you today? Hi Vivian, I'm great. How are you doing? Yes, I'm great too. So welcome to my channel. So Raquel, uh, hopefully you can help me to, to introduce a little bit about yourself. Absolutely, yeah. So I'm a revolutionary human design teacher and I have a human design school where I certify and teach people how to read their DNA blueprint. And I do consider myself more of a spiritual seeker and a spiritual teacher first who integrates human design into the world of spiritual awakening. Thank you so much. I believe that you did uh, a lot of value things for people and you have a lot of people. So I think that in order to to have the people like that, you already um, experienced their special experience, right? So can you share with me and my audience about that? Yeah, absolutely. So I have had a lot of experiences and I'm obsessed with NDEs, kind of like you guys and near-death experiences and but for me I've never I for me I had a series of spiritual awakenings and I had a series of moments where I felt really connected to the other side and that's why I personally love listening to NDEs because I feel like it's the only thing that really relates to my experiences when I'm connected to the other side so my first spiritual experience happened in my early 20s probably 20 one years old when I was traveling all uh, I was doing my junior year abroad and I was traveling through Europe and hitchhiking and <laughs> doing all the crazy things you do at 21 and I found myself in uh, the old city of Jerusalem in Israel and something about the stones and something about being there it opened me up to a new way of being with the world and Prior to that, I had been an atheist and really did not have any experience of God. And I was thinking life was just about getting ahead, being successful, having fun. And at that point, things opened for me and I had just this download of information and I began to feel the world in a different way. I began to feel my heart connected to uh, other dimensions, to even to other people. And this began a series of studying and seeking for me. I started reading. I started researching. I, I didn't necessarily take the organized religion route. I wanted to know about Buddhism. I wanted to know about every single type of religion and why people were having these experiences and where it was all coming from. And then of course I got more into channeling and uh, listening to reading the I Ching, learning about tarot cards, just pretty much anything you could get your hands on. I wanted to study. And somehow I got turned on to the Carlos Castaneda series and he teaches about shamanism. And so I read all those books in a month. I was just voraciously reading them. And then I decided that I wanted a Nagual teacher, which is basically a shamanic teacher. And I went to bed and just set a really strong intention. And the next day I woke up and one of my friends from college was like, oh, did you know that someone's teaching the Toltec wisdom, which is the same lineage as Carlos Casaneda, he, he's teaching it from his living room across the street from where you live. And I was like, oh, okay. This is really the first time the universe reacted to my thoughts where I, I, I set an intention and it was instantaneous and it was, and it happened that way so that I could trust my relationship with the universe and I could begin to trust the journey and the spiritual awakening and the spiritual journey. And so I began to study with this person across the street and he was teaching the four agreements, which is, was at that time, Don Miguel's son before Miguel wrote the book and before Miguel was famous. And so he, I studied with him and he told me to meet his father. His father at that time was 
uh, teaching out of his living room as well in San Diego. And so I used to drive down to San Diego um, every three times a week, studying and meditating and learning. And then I did another traveling all over the world to the pyramids, to Machu Picchu, to the uh -huh. ancient and I began getting downloads and working with my guides and doing, um, you know, having these spiritual experiences, these, these spiritual awakenings. And um, so, and that was my life for a really long time is doing spiritual and studying with teachers. And then I went in and got formality doing a master's degree in spiritual psychology so I could help other people. And yet still something seemed off for me. And the way when I would go to manifest something or I'm trying to work or I'm trying to build a business, things didn't quite work out for me in the same way. And so that's when I found out that I was a projector in human design. And then I started integrating the human design piece into all of the spiritual experiences that I was having. So that's sort of the long roundabout way to go, where I got. <laughs> yeah, it's a long journey, right? It but has. Now, yeah, but now I believe that your life has changed a lot. And I am so happy that because it changed positively. Okay, so yeah. Now I want to ask you the questions that it is about the manifestation because I heard a lot about it. So could you share more about it? How can they help? we in this life how can they have earths yeah so the manifestation is all about this process a lot of people call the law of attraction or you know um the the frequency of vibration what you're vibrating is what you're attracting and this process of manifesting is very true to law so it's very similar to gravity so we know that the frequency base with which you think creates your reality and yet it if if it was that simple then everyone would be doing it no one would be questioning everyone would be having like a really great life and everyone would be a millionaire <laughs> Um, but unfortunately, even though the secret, it's been out for a long time, I think what it did is it created a lot of doubt and confusion in people because people would try it and they'd be like, well, that didn't really work. And the reason why is because humans are very complex. Humans are complicated and our minds are complicated and complex. And so what happens is people have these frequencies and then they go to manifest them. And what I've learned is that everybody has a different aura type. And so there's different ways that auras interact with the outside world. And so the way I teach it through the, the principles of human design is that there are four different aura types. And each one of the aura types manifests in a different unique way. And so in this system, there's only 8% of the population that is here to go out and make something happen. So there's only 8% of the population that are manifestors. And so for those of you who are interested, you can, if you're curious about your aura type, that is something that I, um, you can grab even in our, on our website, you can go to RaquelReyna.com and get your free chart and you just put in your birth information and it tells you your aura type. So when you're manifesting, 8% of the population will traditionally be able to have results from doing something like the secret where they're vibrating and then they go out and they make something happen. That's a pretty small percentage of the population. You know, 8% of the population, that's not a lot of people. And then you have the 92% of the population that has a totally different manifestation style. So I work with all of my clients and all of my students now in using their aura type to decipher their unique way of manifesting in the world. So the principles are similar in that there is a vibrational field. So we do need to make sure we're aware of our thoughts and like meditation is really important. 
being very aware. What are we thinking? How are we positive? Are we negative? Do we have trauma from a financial bankruptcy or something our parents did? All of these things are still really important and do need to be healed. Then when you go out to take action, you have to know your aura type. And so the aura type, when they go out to manifest something, the 70% of the population are going to be generators or manifesting generators. And that 70% has an entirely different manifestation style. And then there's a projector, which is my aura type, and that has a totally different manifestation style. And then there's the reflector, which is also totally different. So what I help teach people to do is to recognize there's a similarity in that there's a frequency based on the planet. And the frequency is when we step into those other worlds. And for the NDE people, it's when you actually are able to go to the other side. And so through the shamanism, we are able to go to that other side. You can reach those frequencies. But what happens is there's a process of coming back down to earth where we're in the third dimension, we're in a physical body. And this is something that everybody who's had an NDE talks about. They're back in their physical body. And then they're trying to sort through, how do I exist in the third dimension? And that's where this aura type comes in. And it's like, once you're grounded and you're here, then there's specific, um, you take those frequencies from the other side, and then you utilize these practical tools for your aura type. And then we learn that even though when we go into those frequencies, we're going into the state of oneness. When we're in these physical bodies, we want to also recognize the differentiation. So we call it the art of differentiation. And it's sort of like reading your DNA code because every single person has a different DNA. And the difference is actually important as well as the similar, the, the, the oneness thread that we all exist within. So the difference is what allows us to play our part being human, our part in this third 3D world, our piece to the puzzle. You know, because if we're trying to be the same, if we're trying to like be homogenized, the cookie cutter, the nine to five, kind of like, this is how we live. This is what we do. And you don't fit into that. That's why the book's called, Are You a Mutant? If you don't fit into that, you're an outsider or, you know, you, you've maybe been the black sheep or you're the light worker or you're somebody who needs to do things differently. Then to find your piece and your part and your role in this world is hard. You know, everybody comes to me. What's my life purpose? What am I here to do? How do I do that? Right? So that's the process is like differentiating your unique piece to the puzzle so that you can play out why you're here on this earth plane. And yes, we want to reach those higher frequencies, but we're also here for a reason. We're in the earth plane for a very specific reason. We need to like play our part here on the earth plane. Yeah, you know, the question, uh, the question is, uh, what is the purpose of me in this life is like, is so, so many people are curious about it. So I think that you can help them to figure out, right? That's exactly it. That's exactly one of the main questions everyone wants to know, you know, why am I here? What's my purpose? And I think that that's actually when most people who, who have these NDE experience, they come back in their body, they're still this process of asking and wondering, you know, why am I here? Why am I alive? Why am I living this life? And even though we can tap a little bit into the why, and I've, you know, had memories from the other side, and I've had experiences with my guides and them kind of sharing, I'm not given the exact detail day to day of like, you know, so, so they're guiding and I tap into um, a, 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 a guidance system of 17 um, blue, I call them the blue beings, but these are the beings on the other side that are guiding and directing me personally in my life. And this guidance and direction, as I, as I kind of go back and forth between those 
those experiences, they help direct me to information sometimes that I can't remember from the other side. That the, that direction is like, read this book, right? Or learn this information or things that are here in this third dimension. And so that's the piece of this human design that's like kind of putting all those pieces together that guide you to your life purpose and guide you to why are you here? What are we doing? What do you? And most people have a mission to fulfill. You know, if people are listening to your channel or people who are listening to NDEs, they have a mission that they're here to fulfill on the earth plane. They're here to do something more than just, you know, go to work and kind of exist. They want something more. Yeah, right? that's right. It's so fascinating to know about it. Thank you, Raquel. The next one I want to ask you is that, um, as you mentioned about the, the trauma person, um how can the trauma the trauma person can manifest successfully because you mentioned a little bit about it right like uh each people in each situation will have um their own manifest way right so how about the trauma person they can manifest successfully Yeah, that's such a great question. I love that question because, and remember, trauma is uh, something that is a spectrum as well, you know, and there's a lot of different types of trauma, obviously, and there's a lot of different ranges of traumatic experiences. You know, some people have trauma around money. Some people have trauma around relationships. Some people have the, you know, different types of, uh, you know, whatever the trauma is. And so I think that we do need to be healed as we're manifesting. And the reason for that is if you think of, you think of it like a broken leg, you know, if you're trying to run a mile. So if you're trying to run a mile, you can't even begin to train if you have a broken leg. So you have to actually slow down and mend the broken pieces. And so if people do have trouble manifesting something in their life, or if you notice that you have repeat patterns, so repeating uh, relationships that are toxic or repeating investments that fail or repeating types of um situations in their life and everybody will notice this because you you know have a relationship and you're like wow that was exactly the same thing that happened over there but it's a different person and you can see it with friends too you can see it with clients even if you have a client that you're having trouble with or something like that usually repeat patterns stem from some type of trauma in your past. And so the healing of the trauma is really a process of being very present with whatever the pain is and not ignoring it, being really, really present with what's, what's happening. So I think most people, they want to get, they want to start running the mile. They want to get there really fast. So then what they do is they mask the pain Um, you know, with all kinds of different things that you're using to mask the pain. Maybe some people will use um, being workaholics. Some people will use overeating. Some people will drink too much or watch too much TV, anesthetize themselves with drugs, whatever it is, alcohol, um, something that kind of, that, that numbs the pain rather than being really able and present to feel what's going on. And then I do think, you know, there's a process that goes with healing. You can do hypnosis. My partner does hypnosis. Hypnosis is a great way to heal trauma. You can also do therapy. Um, what I do when I teach my clients, um, I do a process of journaling. So the journaling is a process of You know, if you're, for example, trying to manifest success in your business and you are doing something and you're not getting success, then 
and it's really uncomfortable in the body. You want to be able to feel it, get really, really present, feel what's going on, and then ask yourself, be willing to journal and sit down and say, you know, when was the first time I felt this way? You know, when was the first time I really felt like, you know, somebody who can't succeed? And then maybe you trace it back to being eight years old and your dad, you know, saying you'll never succeed or whatever it is, or, or your dad's failure, or, you know, your mom was worried about money and said businesses never do well, you have to get a job. And so you kind of trace it back to where that trauma stems from, so that you can get really conscious. And then once you get conscious about that trauma, then you begin to ask yourself, you know, am I willing to see this in the new perspective? And you, you call on your guides or you call on your higher self and you call upon that other dimension to support you in having new thoughts, new inspiration, new ways of seeing something. And then once you get that new inspiration and once you align to that different frequency, then you begin to have inspirational motivation to take action based on one, the inspiration and alignment to the healing and two, based on your inner authority and your human design piece. So that's kind of what I teach for people. It's like the way to manifest with trauma, you got to heal it first. You got to be present, heal, and then you kind of work yourself through that process, heal it, be present. You know, the main thing I think that's wrong with the secret and a lot of law of attraction and manifestation tools is that they're just visualizing what they want and visualizing, can you hold that frequency of that energy? Can you vibrate at the frequency of success? Can you hold that? And you can, if you don't have trauma, you know, if you don't have pain and then also in human design, there's a piece called the individual circuitry, which is what many, many people who, who come to me, they're the mutants and they have individual circuitry. And the theme of that circuitry is melancholy. And so melancholy is not depression but it's an, a melancholy is an energy that is amused to drive you into uh, experiencing the depth of emotion so that you can create something new. So like all of the great artists, all of the great writers, all of the great thinkers, um, Steve Wozniak, who created, you know, Apple computers, it all comes from a little bit of melancholy where they don't feel like they know what to do, or they have this, this sense of there's something deeper inside them. And so for anybody listening who has that melancholy, if you're just studying um, law of attraction, you may not feel the importance to that melancholy. And that's one of the huge pieces in my book that I talk about because I think that in law of attraction, they're so quick to say, don't have any negative feelings, don't have any sadness, don't have any of this. So those people who have melancholy, individual circuitry, or who have trauma, then they they don't get a chance to really heal and feel and not judge themselves while they're going through it so they can take on what they need to in order to fully flower and fully explore and fully manifest. So it's a great question. It's a deep, deep, profound question. And it does take a lot. I mean, it takes time to heal, but it's so worth it because when you really get to feel, you realize that feeling is the gift of being human. You know, anesthetizing ourselves is 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 blocking the gifts that we're here to experience being human. And so to really feel and go deep is the also the process when you finally do get success, you can really appreciate it and be in the joy and be in the expansion because you've learned how to feel, you've learned how to heal and you've learned how to really express yourself as, as a unique individual person. Wow, it's a beautiful message from myself and for my audience. I believe that and I hope that my listeners, when they listen to your story, then they can extract their own solutions to solve their situations. And if not, they can contact you to be healed, right? 
Exactly. Yeah, I think just that alone is a really good first step. And yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, the uh, Are You a Mutant? The book is a step by step guide. And it is it's available, you can, you know, pre order it right now. I think that um, that that book will be such a huge guide for people to give them that, that process, because I learned through reading. I learned so much of my life through Audible because I listen to Audible all the time. I don't know if you guys like to listen to books on tape, but or books on you know recording. Um, that's how so many people get exposed to new things and get exposed to new information and can utilize these teach these great teachings um, in their own home and in their own process. So yeah, absolutely. It's all kind of spelled out in the book as well. Yes, thank you so much. I hope that my audience, they can find uh, your book. You mentioned about the meditating, meditation, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so I would like to ask you about the benefit of meditation. How can it help people in this life? Yeah, so the main thing that's blocking us from any awakening is the thinking mind and the chaos that's happening in the mind. So there's a, a thinking linear uh, process that gets instilled when we're really young. It's how we're conditioned to believe. It's how society puts pressure on us. And we then shut off all of our other areas of perception. And so it's really important to, depending on where you are in your spiritual journey, I mean, meditation is really important for every single person. But when you first start meditating, sometimes all you can do is hear the thinking mind. And so it's just like going to the gym. You have to like really prepare yourself in order to reach higher states of frequency. So what happens is that the meditation begins to quiet the mind. And then when you use frequency and you use energy, uh, what you're doing is you're awakening through the kundalini and through the centers or the chakra center. So the chakra centers are energy centers. And this is actually what I teach in my book. Uh, so are you a mutant, which is the place where I'm taking people through that journey through the centers um, in the way that we teach it through human design. And what you do is you go through each one of the centers or chakra system, and you begin the process of quieting the mind so that the energy frequency then reaches the pineal gland. And what that does is it, it starts to create a chemical release in the brain and in the body. And what happens is, and they've they've now seen this in all of the sciences, quantum physics, and uh, one of the things that um, one of my teachers does is he uh, is able to put devices on your head when you're meditating to track what's going on with the physical body while you go into higher states of consciousness and they're now able to track the mind frequencies moving from beta alpha um, theta gamma and so when you reach these gamma states the entire body begins to change and so you're going to see that in in people that are really really good meditators and then what you also see is that the full chemistry of the body changes and this is where people have instantaneous healings and where the body actually transforms as well. And then they found that it's not just healing, but it's also manifestation, law of attraction, all of these things that are generating our realities. And so what I do is I, I merge that meditation um, alignment and spiritual piece with the tools, the practical tools um, called human design, where people are able to then take their spiritual experiences through meditation and through working all of these principles, and then apply them to the third dimensional world, which is how we're working, 
um, how we're leading our lives, what kind of a jobs we're having, what kind of relationships we're having. So then people know how to step by step figure out how to live. Because for me, so much of my life, I was having these really spiritual experiences, but then I'm coming back and I'm like, I didn't know what to do for work. I didn't know what, how to make money. I didn't know how to integrate all of those spiritual experiences because when you're having these types of experiences, you're not thinking, oh, you know, now I need to go get a job and do A, B, and C. I was not very linear I wasn't a linear thinker. I wasn't somebody who was going to be an accountant or someone who could work in an office. I could, I always had to do something really creative, but I didn't know exactly how to do it. And so that's what the human design piece does. Merging with the meditation, to me, those are the two things that kind of really help to ground the meditation and to integrate it into your day-to-day practical life. So there's meditation and then it's like, how do you have a meditative life that you love? Yeah, it's so interesting to hear about that, you know, like, <clears throat> as you say that uh, through the meditation, we can know how to step by step to know how to have a good life, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. And I notice like a lot of the people when they have NDEs, they have these experiences and then they don't really know how to integrate them. They don't really know how to bring them forward in their life because they they had such a huge like life altering experience through whatever their death experience was, what are the car accidents or all of these experiences. So what I'm trying to do is help people have that experience without needing a near death experience. So you can keep your body nice and healthy and safe (laughs) and you don't have to worry about dying or anything like that. But usually for people who don't have an NDE, they have these kind of, um, peaks of spiritual experience and then they they kind of contract a little bit and it's like pulses where you have like pulsing into the other world then contracting into your day to life daily life and then big expansion into the other worlds and then contracting into the normal day to day so it's a way to kind of touch into that other world and then still you know have a great life yeah, that's right. I think that what you what you have shared is so meaningful for me and my audience. Thank you so much. So um, I would like to ask you well, one more question. You are so happy and you look full of energy. So uh, for the people who are facing with a bad situation, with the trauma and the bad issue, they can overcome the difficulties and they have a happy life like you. <laughs> Well, I, you know, I wouldn't say that, um, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm happy all the time. I mean, I definitely still have highs and lows like anybody else. And I definitely have growing edge, you know, where it's time for me to grow. And, and so I journal, I process, um, I go through all of my teachings all of the time. And so I think that we never really get to the point where even those people who are fully enlightened and fully awakened, there's always a process of continually growing and expanding and learning and becoming. And so I do think that people are at different stages of that process. And I do think that it is important that people know that they can feel really satisfied and really successful and really at peace and really in a state of awe in life, as opposed to feeling what most people I notice feel frustrated or bitter or disappointed or, you know, feeling angry. Those are the feelings of what we call the not self theme. And so what I like to do is I like to help people get out of their not self themes for more often, you know, more often in the, in the, the, the true signature and the true signature is moving out of frustration into satisfaction, out of bitterness into success out of disappointment into a sense of being in awe of the world and out of anger into living in a state of peace. And so it is a journey of of shifting that each day, learning that it is possible to shift, 
and learning that there are tools available now that weren't available 20 years ago even. And tools now, just like the i the iPhone upgrade every year, there are spiritual tools that are upgrading so that we can all reach those higher and higher states. We can all reach those NDE states without dying. We can tap on to the other side. We can be mediums. We can talk to our guides. It's all available for us. Um, and sometimes we have sadness. We have things that happen and there's nothing wrong with that either. It's just learning how to um, get back up and, and the tools and learning the tools so that you can constantly be in a process of growing and expanding and learning and, and going to your next level. Yeah, that's right. All the things are available for all of us. Okay, so thank you so much, Raquel. So I think that um, you have shared a lot of value, valuable things with me and my audience. Um, on behalf of my audience, I hope that you will stay in good health and continue and cherish your story and help you more and more people. Thank you so much for giving me and my audience a chance to listen to your story. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. Yes, so thank you. So if my audience want to contact you, how can they contact? Could you please share? Yeah, so it's Raquel Reyna Official on uh, Instagram and, and TikTok. If you guys are there, uh, RaquelAndDividian.com is the website or RaquelReyna.com. And then um, we have a great YouTube channel also, which is Raquel and Davidian Unleash Your Genius. But the most important thing is for people to um, be able to get the book, which is available on Amazon. And you just, are you a mutant? Raquel Reyna is my name. And are you a mutant? And you'll be able to find the link for the book, which is really like one of the best investments to learn this stuff. Um, so those are all of the platforms. I'm sure there's plenty more, but those are the main ones. <laughs> 